Hi, it's Dawn from Ninja Bunny Crochet. Today I have for us to do this washcloth and scrubby sponge set. I will probably break this up into two videos just simply because of the length of time to make these. But I used um, two different types of yarn to make these. Let's set these over here. The cotton yarn I used was called Peaches and Cream and the color is Sunshine and the scrubby yarn I used was Red Heart Scrubby and this color is called Citrus. Um, you won't need a full ball of the scrubby yarn. You're going to want two balls of the Peaches and Cream. Um, this yarn is comes in a 78 yard ball. You're going to use very little of this, so if you've got a ball of this that you've tried and you didn't like it, this you're going to use together, combined. You're going to use these together, which will help you see your stitches. So this will be a great way to use up this scrubby yarn. I know a lot of people have gotten this and then they didn't like it because they couldn't see their stitches very well. So using it combined together helps you uh, see your stitches. So you're going to want a 5.5 millimeter or an eye hook, um, some pins, a stitch marker, yarn needle, and your scissors. So once you have all your supplies, let's get started on making the scrubby and washcloth set. To start the um, dish scrubby sponge. We're going to start with a chain of 20. Now I like to flip my chain over and work in the back bars of the chain, but it doesn't matter. You can also work in the in the chain the regular way. So we're going to start second chain from hook. The loop on your hook does not count as a stitch, so go one, two, and work into that chain with a single crochet. I'm going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way down the chain. You should have 19 single crochet when you get to the end of your chain. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the chain. I'm at the end of the row I have 19 single crochets. To start row two, we're going to chain one, turn the work, and in that very first stitch, place a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip the next chain and in the next one, a single crochet and a double crochet. Skip the next chain, or stitch, excuse me, single crochet and double crochet. Skip the next stitch single crochet and double crochet. And repeat this pattern all the way down to you get to your last two stitches. And I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. And at the end of row two, we have two stitches remaining. We're going to skip one stitch and single crochet into the last stitch. To start row three, we chain one and turn the work. We're going to repeat row two, so we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and double crochet into that same stitch. Skip the next one and single crochet and double crochet into that same stitch. 
skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Continue this pattern all the way across, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row to show you how to end the row. At the end of row three, I have two stitches left. Your last stitch is going to be a little bit on a curve there, so don't miss that stitch. And you're going to place, you're going to skip the next one, and you're going to place one single crochet into that last stitch. So you're always going to end on a sing, end on one single crochet, and you're going to start your row on a single crochet and a double crochet. So start row four, we're going to chain one and turn the work. So now we're going to repeat row two again and we're going to do that for row four through eleven. So I'll start you off in a single crochet and double crochet into that same stitch, that first stitch. Skip the next one, single crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Again, skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. So continue working this pattern for rows 4 through 11. Your stitch counts should remain the same throughout the pattern. You should have 19 stitches. I will meet back up with you at the end of row 11. I'm at the end of round 11. We still have 19 stitches. To start round 12, chain 1 and turn the work. For this round, we're going to work in our back loops only. In case you're unfamiliar with what your front loops and your back loops are, these are your, grab my yarn needle here, this is your back loops right here, and these are the front loops. So for this round, we're going to work just in the back loops. For round 12, or excuse me, row 12. I apologize, we're not working in rounds, we're working in rows. So for row 12, we're going to work single crochet only in each stitch. So work one single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row 12. We still have 19 stitches. To start row 13, we're going to chain one and turn the work. And we're going to be working through both loops and we're going to start our pattern again. So we're going to single crochet in the first stitch and double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Continue working the, this pattern all the way across to the end of the row, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row 13. We have two stitches left, and we're going to single crochet in that very last stitch. Chain one, and turn the work. We still have 19 stitches, and now we're ready to start round 14. 
oh, excuse me, row 14. So for row 14 through row 23, we're going to go ahead and repeat our row 13. So I'll start you off. We're going to single crochet and double crochet into that first stitch. Skip the next one, single crochet and double crochet into the next. Skip the next stitch, single crochet and double crochet into the next. Skip the next stitch, single crochet and double crochet into the next. So please repeat this pattern to the end of the row. That is row 14. Continue working in pattern to row 23 and I'll meet back up with you at the end of row 23. I'm at the end of row 22. We still have 19 stitches to start row 23. We're going to chain one and turn the work. Row 23, we're going to be working in our back loops again in just single crochet. So single crochet in each stitch across, back loop only. So one single crochet in each stitch and the back loop only. And I'll meet up with you again at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row 23. We still have 19 stitches. We're going to now add our scrubby yarn to our yarn. So as we do our chain stitch, we're going to throw a loop of our scrubby yarn on and we're going to bring that, pull that in with our chain. And just leave this tail, you can work over this tail or you can leave it hang and you can work it in later. So turn the work. And now we're going to be working our cotton yarn with our scrubby yarn. So I'm going to leave my tail hanging down here so that you can see what I'm doing. We're going to be working in half double crochets now. So yarn over, insert into the first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on the hook. So we're going to work half double crochet all the way across the row for row 24. And we're working both the cotton yarn and the scrubby yarn together. So it helps you see your stitches a little bit better. Let me bring the camera down a little so you can you can see where the stitches are through this right here where here's your one stitch and then here's your stitch so it helps you find your stitches with their scrubby yarn. It makes it easier. So continue working half double crochet all the way across the row with both the yarn and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row 24. I still have 19 stitches and I'm just going to pull my hook out here for a second and throw a stitch marker in so I don't lose my end. And I'm just going to pull the camera back a little here to show you. If you're getting lost on your rows, all you need to do is just where your back loops are, just fold up your piece, it'll fold really easy, and then you can see where your rows are. And you can just, if you're not sure because you lost track of your rows, just fold it over and see if it lines up. If you're like, if your piece is ending like here, then you know you need to add an extra couple of rows. So don't sweat it if you lose track of what row you're on because you just keep working until you over to the over to the edge just make sure like you're close to the edge like 
you would be like right here because you're going to add like a row of single crochet at the end of this row. So, so don't sweat it if you lose track of what row you're on. It's pretty easy to, uh, to lose track of it, especially with this stitch. As long as everything lines up, you'll be good to go. It's a sponge. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's start up our next row. Make sure you catch both your yarn. I'm going to chain one and turn our work. Let's back down a little. So we're going to continue in half double crochet for row 25 through 32. So in each stitch, just work one half double crochet. You'll have 19 stitches in each row. It'll be tight because you're working both with both with both thicknesses of yarn. So just keep working one half double crochet into each row, and I will meet back up with you at the end of row 32. I'm at the end of row 32. We still have 19 stitches. I'm going to pull up our hook here and we're going to snip off our scrubby yarn. We're not going to fasten off our cotton yarn. So just, just the scrubby yarn. Keep your cotton yarn. So we're just going to go ahead and fasten that off. Let's leave that tail hanging. Chain one. Now you can work over the top of the scrubby yarn to lock it in or you can just leave it hanging and work it in later. I'm going to turn the work and for row 32 we're just going to work a single crochet into each stitch. So just work one single crochet. Let's put my yarn there, bear with me one second. So work one single crochet into each stitch. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row 33. We still have 19 stitches. I'm going to go ahead and take out my hook and put a stitch marker in so my yarn doesn't pull out. And let's bring the camera out and we're going to fold up our piece. So this ridge right here, this is round Oh, excuse me, row 13. So we're going to take this and we're going to fold this up like so. And when you flip over your piece, row 1 is going to meet up now with this ridge, which was the back loops, or excuse me, the front loops, or the free loops, of row 23. So row 1 meets up with row 23. Then this is row 33, and it's going to fold down and meet up with the free loops of row 13. So this is how your piece folds up. Now I flip it over so that the cotton side is facing up. And then I'm going to get some pins, and I'm going to make sure that everything lines up nice and neat like this and I'm going to pin it down before I go to the next step and start to crochet, single crochet, in the ends of the rows and then into the free loops, the ends of the rows and the free loops. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pinned down and then I'll be right back. 
Now I've just placed pins like in the four corners to make sure that this stays together when I start to crochet. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out, put my hook back in, and turn my piece so that the end of the rows is facing upright. And you're just going to stick your hook in, make sure you get through the front piece and the back piece. You don't necessarily need to get through the inner piece. And in that first stitch, you're going to want to place three single crochets for your corner. Now I don't necessarily have a certain set number of stitches along the ends. But what I do is make sure however many stitches I go from corner to corner, I make sure I do the same number of stitches on this side as I do on this side to keep the piece in balance. So go ahead and start placing your single crochets, making sure you're getting through both layers. It's a little tough because you got to kind of jam your hook in there and just make sure you count the number of stitches that you're putting in so that you'll keep the same number on both sides. Like I said, it's a little bit, it's a little tough, but you can get through them. Just like that. And like I said, there's no real set number of stitches or where to put them in, just where you can kind of evenly place them along the sides. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, it's just, it's a sponge. So continue working your, your single crochets along the corner, along the edge here, and then when you get to your corner, it doesn't have to be like in the exact corner stitch, but where it looks like your corner would be best placed, that's where you're going to put your three single crochets. So. And be careful you don't stick yourself in that pin there when you're working. So this looks like it would be a good spot to go ahead and put those three single crochets. Look like a good spot for the corner. You're going to kind of have to eyeball that yourself and make sure it looks like a good spot. And then when you're working on your side, you can go ahead and remove this pin at this point. Catch those free loops and work your stitches into the free loops. All the way to you get to the other corner and then you're going to work the same thing around this corner to this corner and then you're going to work in your your free loops all the way back to the original to your first corner and slip stitch to the first single crochet that you made. I'll meet back up with you when we get back to this corner. I've made it all the way back around and we're just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made and fasten off. So now we just have to weave in our end and our sponge is all complete. Let's back out the camera here. And now our sponge is all done. Just weave, I'll have to weave that in. And in part two I will show you how to make the matching dishcloth. So if you've liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.